Hello guys. This tutorial is about making procedural uh, shape for the UI button. Idea came up when I was assigned nearly the same task on my day job. Uh, so as you can see, that's the whole graph with lot of control. We can actually manipulate each corner of our shape. Uh, we can control roundness of corners, width and height. Uh, we can shear it or skew. Also, we have an outline which can be sharp or which can be the mask for our glow. So uh, it's basically same as emissive. Uh, how we can manage it? Uh, there is uh, some mathematical uh, background for this one. Uh, as I uh, remember it correctly, but I can be mistaken, uh, it's called barycentric uh, coordinates. So basically we can, uh, if we know particular uh, side, we can find the uh, vertex coordinate inside the shape. So we can with this one control like the overall shape and build up triangular, rectangle uh, and other shapes like pentagon, uh, hexagon, etc. It's just more complex. This one is simple uh, rectangular shape and uh, by having this you can actually cover 95% of all cases that you may think of. So we need to build up vector 3 then we need to subtract uh, from top position left and right uh, vertices. So this one and this one. Uh, when we subtract each of them, also, uh, as you can see, I have uh, some values that I don't need to change during the adjustment. Uh, that's why they are called uh, non-active. So once we do subtraction from each vertex, then we need to build up the cross product. That's actually uh, area of vertices that uh, are built between two perpendicular uh, vectors. Now we will have this one. And everything that is covered with the blue is uh, area that we can control. The black one uh, actually uh, isn't uh, controlled, we don't need it. So that's for the top, that's for the bottom. The same layout, the same logic and we have this one, so it's opposite. Next thing is to do the same for the right and left uh, sides. For the right one, we need to have top and bottom, and for the left, top and bottom also. So, uh, right side, this one and this one, left side, this one corner and this one corner. So, results are the same. We are masking out sides. Then we need to multiply everything, and here I have a static switch parameter, which is called uh, skew or shear. So you can see I have grouped them. Um, yep, and then we need to mask out the uh, blue channel. So we have the gradient from zero to one. It's uh, the gray scale. And then uh, if you take a look at the standard UV, let me quickly show how the channel works. So basically you see that the result that we have here. Um, so it's for our top and bottom. So it's our G channel. We have the same as we can have here. You see, uh, the only reason 
uh, why we have both it's because by default this uh, static switch attribute is false if it's true then it will return the same as the d channel of texture coordinates and once we append those two vectors we actually receive the uv uh, uv layout let's say it and by having this one we can see that we can control each corner independently so it's the same as it's uh, divided by four parts uh, with the mirror modifier once we have this one we need to use generate round rectangle to build up um, actually this one and here i have vector four uh, they all have uh, their own custom channels and each attribute here is for particular uh, particular change inside the shape so width and height radius and sharpness of the main uh, of the main button next one is outline or gl outline glow so it can be sharp and it can be uh, smooth uh, and used as the uh, emissive mask so from this one we actually add uh, offset on the bounds and use the same uh, here radius and sharpness uh, for outline glow is controlled separately so uh, you can have more control overall next thing is to subtract uh, from our outline glow the dimensions and we'll receive uh, the gradients as you can see that starts with the edge of our dimensions and is increasing outward next is color button and color outline uh, as you can see we need to actually colorize overall shape you can control by opacity multiplier uh, the opacity of each shape independently and as a result you can see we have this one so uh, i hope you understand the idea behind this one and uh, yep let me show you uh, how it can be controlled so for instance if we uh, let me show you if we have unchecked each shear uh, shear or skew modifier uh, we can control independently each corner so top one like this right like this bottom right so even like uh, this one and if you take a look with uh, proper alignments this one like if we align the uh, we can actually use this one to the font material and make our text inside our button also be aligned properly and this one will uh, will actually look like we have a uh, depth like the 3d widget but uh, in uh, the 2d uh, dimension uh, the reason we have shear here and like if we want to uh, change the height for our button you can see that the roundness of our corners are actually changed but we have uh, pretty much non very looking not very good looking uh, shape that's why we need to uh, actually make uh, mask out the top position from our vertical and for our horizontal uh, left side so like the gradient that are used uh, with the uv channels once we have this one and when we start changing the height we can see that the roundness of our corners are actually um, stored and they are not distorted and the lines on our horizontal 
are actually straight lines, not the distorted one. With having this one, we can actually build up the taper. For instance, we can go with um, like this, so one like this. Uh, we can actually skew it to make it look like it's skew. Sorry. So if it's okay about uh, the skew or skew, uh, skew or shear, uh, we need to actually change both vertical and horizontal to be set as true. Now uh, we can actually control like the skew on our horizontal. Uh, sorry, no, our vertical one. So you can see how the shape changes. Or like this, not this one, but the right one. Yeah, this one. Or if you want to use it as the skew on horizontal one, uh, we can change bottom like this, top opposite one like this, and change the width to height. So you can see that it's actually uh, changed pretty much well. So you can uh, play around with these controls. Now let's talk about how to make it work with the widget. Uh, I will leave this shape as it is. Make it look, um, let's go with another one, this one. So next in our widget. Here you can see uh, how to build up this button. I need an overlay with the particular size. Uh, next thing is to put image where we uh, actually have the reference of our material instance. Uh, the order of these widgets are also important. So the one that is on our bottom uh, has a hit result. Text here and it's actually the bottom, but as you can see, render opacity is set to zero. So we'll be multiple. We will be manipulating uh, the simple button, but uh, overall uh, look will be changed with this image. Also, make sure that the visibility of everything uh, is set to non-heat testable. So only our button shape here uh, is actually visible one. And here with the scale, we can make it as it is. Uh, we even can share it like this one. Uh, and that's actually it. Uh, one more thing is that we can add uh, animation. And if you select in the track, uh, the widget that uh, you need to change, it's our image this one here you can use track and select brush material once you have this one here uh, you can actually select on the parameter and all our customizable attributes that we uh, have here top bottom right like this one are actually uh, visible here and we can change it during the timeline and make it uh, animation. So in the graph, you can see that I have hovered, unhovered, press and release events. Each one has stop all animations, so we can uh, reset the default reset to the default state of our button. And then uh, we need to make a logic for like animating our button. Like here, I have play animation pulse. It's set uh, to be played uh, infinite times. And here uh, on the color outline, I change the alpha channel. So it's going from 1 to 0 0.25 and back to 1. That's how it is glowed. And then once you press play, you see everything works as it should work. Press release. So that's why, that's 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 how you can control it and make a change to each state also independently. 
So guys, I hope you like this quick tutorial. Uh, everything is under the description to this video, so you can have the sample project. Uh, links to my Discord and Patreon also there. And leave your feedback. See you soon.